In today's episode, we're going to be checking out the D'Angelico Deluxe Bedford Semi Hollow. This is in Sage, which is kind of like a sonic blue. It's very, very light baby blue, almost like kind of like I said, like a faded baby blue. This was sent out by Sweetwater so we could check it out today. So we're going to be doing a video and getting into it. Now, one thing before we get started, this guitar is $1,600. It's made in Korea and it comes with a hard shell fitted case, which is a nice option. But the reason I picked this guitar is because I loved how it has so many versions, including versions that go as low as $699, with a lot of the specifications being the same. And I love it when companies do this when they make a guitar pretty much virtually the same, just with options that increase the price, so you can decide where do you want to spend. This one's on the pricier side. This one's $1,600. It's made in Korea, comes with a case, comes with locking straps, comes with locking Grover uh, keys and Seymour Duncan noiseless P90. So there's a lot of upgrades in this, especially rosewood fretboard and a set through neck. And you can see I've already taken off the back plate and we'll, we'll discuss that later. And uh, you can see it's not a neck through, it's a set through. So it does sit in just like a normal set neck. They really carved away at it to make it look like a neck through. What you have is a gloss body with a satin neck until you get the first fret and then it goes back to gloss, which is nice. This isn't natural wood. This is all polyurethane. So this is polyurethane all the way down the neck and through the body. But like I said, they give a satin finish. So it feels kind of like natural wood. It just doesn't feel sticky. Um, you have a three piece neck and you have a tusk nut, which is also very nice. 22 medium frets, and they are very de detailed and polished. And then you have a uh, block inlays, and it comes with Daddario strings. These feel like Daddario NYXLs. I could be wrong, but that's what they feel like. They just says Daddario strings. You have a Wilkinson tremolo system, kind of like a Stratocaster, but it has a push-in tremolo arm, which is nice. Volume tone with custom knobs and a three-way switch. Okay, let's see how this guitar sounds. We're gonna start with a 65 Deluxe Reverb with the stock speaker, and we're just miking it up, and let's see how it sounds clean. <laughs> This is awesome. It's a little surf rocky, right? It's got that kind of offset uh, body. Nice, beautiful on that P90. Okay, middle position. In the bridge. You know what's funny is that's got that uh, kind of w really strange. I love that. I really like that bridge. That's Nice. Let's go ahead and take the bridge. Let's take the tone control. That's a uh, halfway mark.
not a huge fan of the tone control. It's fine. It works for what it needs, uh, for what you need it to. I'm sure in different amps it works, reacts differently. Speaking of amps, let's go ahead and try some overdrive. I'm going to run through the Bad Cat Cub 40 into a 112 with a Vintage 30, running a Boss DD3 delay pedal into the effects loop. <laughs> These P90s sound great, and of course they're noiseless because they're uh, noiseless stack P90s by Seymour Duncan. So of course you'll not, you won't get the 60 cycle hum. I find they're a little darker, which is why I kind of just tabbed the uh, the treble on the amp a little bit and I kind of blended it out. So this is just beautiful sounding P90. What I really like though is how different they are in the neck and the middle uh, in the bridge position. So here's your bridge. Little punch, then we go to the neck. And they're adjusted correctly for height. It's just something about that neck position. Sounds really good, warms it up. Something else is worth mentioning is, sure, you can use the volume to clean up the amp. It came with these strap locks, and they look like uh, they look like Schaller strap locks, but they're not marked, so I don't think they're actual branded Schaller strap locks. Of course, I've, I explained this before when I've talked about D'Angelico's, they have this kind of very or over the top, over the top kind of look. Of course, everything from the truss rod to the the inlays to this this top piece right here. I mean, everything is just it's it's a little bit of a different vibe, right? It's kind of cool, kind of classic, but also kind of like a Cadillac, right? It's all about you know a little showy here. Even though this has got this kind of played down vibe that I really like. Okay, so let's look at some geeky stuff. The first thing I wanna tell you that I like is that they're using a 13 degree angle on the headstock like Epiphone does and not like the 17 degree angle that Gibson does. That combined with the fact that they're using a multi-laminate neck, I think you have a really strong neck, especially being maple and it's really good. And I think that's one of the things I think that will stand out on this type of instrument. It's durable. Out of the box, the action was 2.25 millimeters off the 12 fret or 0.08, which is high action. You want to see it around two millimeters, 0 0.07 or lower. And although this was playable, it was a little high. And so I would definitely recommend an adjustment. Now looking at the neck, we can see it has a little relief. And this is a real common thread when we go to these geeky stuff. We keep seeing this is exactly how the guitars are coming. They're coming with just a little bit of relief and a little bit of a high action. In most cases, we don't have to adjust the bridge, just tighten the truss rod a little bit. A couple things I just want to confirm is that it does have a 14 inch radius on the fretboard. It is not compound radius and it is an alder body. And so those both things I confirmed. Looking at the neck carve, you can see it is exactly what they say. It's a C shape, but it's really like the 62 Strat, which we see a lot. It's a little thinner even, even on the 12th fret, it's a little thinner. This neck plays fast. This is definitely for someone who likes a really small mid-sized neck. Giving you some quick measurements, we have 1.6 on the nut, which is 43 millimeters wide and 52 millimeters wide on the 12th fret or two inches. On the first fret, we are 20.9 millimeters or 21 millimeters, and that's 0.8. 
And on the 12 fret, we are 22.8 or 23 millimeters and 0.898 or 0.9. Checking the frets, I came across no dead notes, no high frets, and more importantly, no scratchy or dull frets. There was no corrosion, everything felt really nice. So let's go ahead and check the fret ends. As always, we're gonna check the fret ends with a sock test just to see how nice it is. And really good, I can already tell. Maybe a teeny mark there, but nothing nothing to, to worry about. 4.5 out of five. Uh, feeling the other side, the bass side. This is definitely a five out of five. I kind of knew this going in because I just played the guitar, it was great. Checking the nut slots, they're cut really well. There's a little bit of room, but when playing the guitar, I thought it felt fine, so I'm gonna leave it alone. The whole point of this section is to be a little bit more detailed and go in a little deeper, and there's a couple things that I didn't like. The pick guard, it's a little bit bowed up. Not much, but a little bit. One thing that's nice about this pick guard is not connected to anything, so you can just take the screws and take it off, and I'm gonna show you how to fix that warp pick guard. All you gotta do is place it on a flat surface, and I'm gonna use a heat gun. Basically, just warm up the pick guard a little bit, and then use something hard and flat like a book. I'm gonna use this sanding beam in a second. You can see, once I got it warm, just put the sanding beam on it and wait till it cools. And then, as you can see, problem is fixed. It is perfectly flat. If you wanna know how to do this either with or without a heat gun, go ahead and click the link down below. I have detailed videos on how to fix all kinds of problems. The other thing I noticed was on the binding, you can see a little bleed through right there. And again, these things on a guitar at this price point, these are things you don't wanna see. But as always, I wanna make sure I point them out as I mentioned, this is a semi-hollow guitar. It's made of alder, and we want to see basically how much of this is chambered. We know there's nothing chambered underneath the pickguard. So looking at the top portion of the guitar, we can tell that this entire area right here is chambered, which is a pretty big area. I mean, that's definitely 40% of the guitar is hollowed out. And of course, we know that the electronics are also hollowed out. This guitar is definitely what they said. It's semi-hollow. Okay, so let's look at the electronics. We have conductive shielding paint painted in here. You have two 500K potentiometers right here that are made in Korea, and of course a capacitor for your tone control. You have a PC board blade switch that is a little flimsy. It's one of the things I don't like about this guitar. Other than that, the wire up looks really good. You have the output jack, and I like that they use a metal plate for the output jack instead of plastic. One thing that's strange to point out is that the control cavity is recessed and the tremolo plate is top mounted. A little strange. I just thought it was weird to do one one way and the one the other. Both are Mother Pro, which looks really nice. So give them that. And another thing worth noting is that I did confirm that they are Seymour Duncan stacked noiseless P90s. And obviously the, the set of these is about $260. So you can see where that adds to the price of the guitar. Okay, so uh, let's let's talk about the pros and cons. Well, the pros are pretty simple. It's a it's a high quality in its feature set. In other words, uh, having the set through with the uh, multi laminate neck, with uh, the binding and the rosewood, the really finely uh, finished frets, the nut, the locking tuning keys, and going with some name brand uh, pickups that are real well known. Those are really cool. I like the bridge. I love these custom knobs. I love a lot of things. The custom fitted case is a nice touch. Again, this is a very expensive guitar and it's priced as such. I mean, there's a lot of competitors in this price range. So it's just a, it's a really hard thing to be in that market to do. But the fact that they have uh, instruments like this for less money really is nice because like I said, you can look at those if this is a little bit out of your price range or if you're not feeling it like that way. Something else I just want to point out uh, I should point out it's sound. It does have a very nice and very cool, unique sound that I really like. And I think that's the selling point of this. This is definitely for someone who's not looking for the normal thing that they picked up off the walls lately. This is somebody for looking something a little different. So the cons, well, the cons are pretty simple. There was some a little unfortunate, some attention to details on this guitar that you hate to see at this price point. Like I said, a little bit of a flub up on the binding and a little bit of the, the pickguard lifted. However, I like to point out, I point those things out because I know that those are value points. The whole point of this channel is to show you a value point. In other words, if you're thinking about spending this kind of money, what should you expect if you're going to buy one of these? They're not things I'd love to see, but none of those were deal breakers for me because the things that mattered were done right. The nut was cut correctly. The frets uh, were polished correctly. The fit and finish of the way it plays was done. The neck is really the draw and it really brings you in. Um, this is really an instrument that's all about, it's kind of like its look, and then of course the feel of this neck. It's really, really cool. As always, I want to thank Sweetwater for letting us uh, check out the guitar, and for you guys spending some time with me today. Till the next time, know your gear. Now just remember, the builders who send these guitars for my review have a drive to make great guitars. They agree to send non-cherry-picked instruments and let me try to find the best and the worst points of their guitar. Nothing I say or show is meant to take away from their hard work, dedication, and I applaud their ability to check their egos at the door and share their workmanship with us. Let's face it, most companies are not willing to do this.